As you guys may know, I am a Ronin S user. So when Moza reached out to me about trying the Moza Air 2, the first thing I thought was, is this a cheap Ronin knockoff or is this a gimbal that's legitimately worth considering? So since Moza did send me this gimbal for free, I am not going to go out and tell you to buy it. I'm just going to show you what it's all about and I'm going to let you make your own decisions. This video is all about how this gimbal helps you in the real world, how it makes your job easier or more efficient on actual shoots. In this video, I'm going to go over the features of the Moza 2 and I'm going to show you actual footage from using the Moza 2 as well. Specs, of course, don't tell the whole story, but to get some of them out of the way, this gimbal holds up to 9 pounds payload it has a 16 hour battery life and it weighs about three and a half pounds. So yes, this gimbal is still on the heavy side, but it's not as heavy as other gimbals that can carry this much weight. Like the Ronin S is about a half a pound heavier than the Moza Air 2. And that might not sound like much, but when you pick them up right after each other, you definitely can notice the difference between the weight that it has. I think this is mainly because the bottom of the Moza Air 2 is hollow because the batteries are removable and the Ronin S is pretty much just like heavy duty metal everywhere. It's a very solid gimbal. The Moza Air 2 doesn't feel cheap, it's just that the Ronin S is really built like a tank. So starting off with the user experience, the first thing of gimbal use is balancing your camera. Being able to set up your camera quickly and get the shooting as fast as possible makes a huge difference on actual shoots. Sometimes my whole decision on if I'm going to use a gimbal or not comes down to if I have time to actually mess with the gimbal. If I feel like the gimbal is going to slow me down too much to stop me from doing what I need to do, then 9 out of 10 times I'm not going to use it. The Moza Air 2 has two things going for it doing the balancing that sped up my process coming from the Ronin S. One thing is on the back arm of the Moza Air 2, you can actually lock the axis. Being able to lock that back arm means you don't have to worry about the camera moving around on you when you're trying to find balance because the gimbal is flopping all over the place. Also, this helps when you're transporting the gimbal because once you turn it off and you're just holding it by your side or something, the camera isn't banging against the side of the gimbal like it would on the Ronin S. And the second thing about the balancing process with the Moza Air 2 is that it has a double quick release plate. On the Ronin S, you mount the base plate on the camera, you slide it onto the gimbal until it's balanced, and then you lock it off. But on the Moza Air 2, you mount the base plate on the camera and you slide it into a second quick release plate that stays on the gimbal. Now the second quick release plate is what you slide around to find the balance. But once you have the balance set on the second quick release plate, you can take the first one off with the camera and slide it on and back off again without having to worry about any loss of balance. So once you have the balance set with the second quick release plate, you can take the first one on and off all day long and your balance won't be affected at all. So I can pop the camera off, do what I have to do and pop the camera back on and don't even have to worry about where did I slide the camera or where did I had set last time. It just pops right back on and I can go on about my business. I think those two features are something that should be on every gimbal from this point forward because once you have the ability to do those things, it's hard to go back to something that doesn't have it without being annoyed. Once the camera is mounted on the gimbal, the balancing process is pretty much the same with all gimbals. All of the cables that are needed to connect any supported camera is included with the Moza Air 2, so you don't have to worry about going out and have to buy another cable to connect your camera to the gimbal. So if your camera is supported, there's the cable in the box for your camera. Now depending on the camera that you have, you can control things like all of your settings with the shutter speed, the aperture ISO, you can charge the camera through USB, you can start and stop recording, and you can take photos all from the gimbal. Those things just depend on the camera model that you have, so with all the firmware updates, I can't really say what's supported and what's not supported because it's always changing, so I'm going to link it down below and you can see what works for your camera with this gimbal. On the back of the gimbal, you do have a trigger that allows you to lock all the axes by holding it down. You can double tap to recenter or triple tap to enter selfie mode. Or for some cameras that are supported, you can single tap and focus with the camera. There's also a mounting hole on the back of the gimbal that allows you to attach any accessories that you might need. I use it to attach my external monitor, so whatever you need to screw on to the back of the gimbal, there's a hole for it. The focus wheel on the side of the gimbal is built in, so no matter what package you get, the focus wheel will be included, but you can't take it off or move it to the other side or anything like that. But all of them come with a focus wheel. And if your camera doesn't have the ability to focus, or if you're not using an external follow focus, then you can set the wheel to do things like control the roll axis. One of the biggest things that stood out to me about using this gimbal is how precisely you can change and control the different modes on the gimbal. On the Ronin S, I can use the app to set up three preset modes to switch between on the gimbal, but with the Moza Air 2, I don't need to use the app at all, and I can go through and adjust the different modes from the screen on the front of the gimbal 
So it allows me to switch between things very easily. And the amount of control that it gives me for the different modes is just way more than I can ever do with the Ronin. So for example, I like to keep my gimbal as unresponsive as possible for the situation that I'm in because I don't want it to be moving any more than it actually has to. So on the Ronin S, I pretty much have it set at very unresponsive, kind of responsive, and very responsive. But with the Moza Air 2, all you have to do is rotate the dial on the front of the gimbal and you can have it set exactly how you need to be set for different modes. So for me, I usually have the gimbal dialed in between 10 and 20 on all of the axes. But if I needed to hurry up and switch to maybe 75 or 85, all I have to do is rotate the dial and I can do that while I'm shooting without having to go into the app. So on my Ronin S, if I didn't have the mode set up that I needed, I would have to go into the app, change things around, and then I would be able to use it. But with the Moza Air 2, I can really dial it in on the fly without having to open up any apps or worrying about presets, and I can have it dialed in exactly what I need at that very moment. Now to build on top of that, I can also control each one of the axes from the screen. Now this might sound a little complicated, but I'm gonna go through that with you. On the screen from the bottom up, you have pan, roll and then tilt. So to lock the pan axis or unlock the pan axis, I click the stick one time. So click it once, it locks. Click it once, it unlocks. For the roll axis, I click it twice, it locks. I click it twice again, it unlocks. And for the tilt axis, I click it three times to lock it, three times to unlock it. So to change the pan axis is always one click. To change the roll axis is always two clicks and to change the tilt axis is always three clicks. So I can tell the gimbal what axis I want to move and what axis I don't want to move all from the gimbal without having to open the app. This gimbal does have sport mode, so if you need to make quick pans left and right, then all you have to do is press the FN button once and you will see a Q pop up next to the pan axis. This gimbal does have inception mode by double tapping the FN button and it allows you to do the 360 roll. Now the convenient thing about the 360 roll on this gimbal is that when you rotate the wheel, you can say exactly how fast you want the gimbal to auto rotate and you can set it to rotate in either direction. So I don't have to hold the stick in the direction that I want the gimbal to roll and it automatically rolls for me at the speed that I set it to roll at. And I can do all this again without entering the app. Now, if you hold down the function button, the gimbal will do an auto calibration. So the gimbal will take whatever payload you have on it and automatically set the strength of each motor to do exactly what it needs to do for each axis. So if it determines that the roll axis needs to be set a little stronger than the tilt axis, it's going to automatically set each one to the proper value based on what you have mounted on it. This is a good thing to do when you're in a situation where the gimbal won't always be perfectly balanced. So like if you have a zoom lens and it extends when you zoom in or out, the gimbal will lose balance. So if you auto calibrate it to make up for that, it knows, okay, I need to set this mode a little stronger because it's front heavy now. Or if you're taking something on and off the camera like a microphone or something, then you can just auto calibrate it real quick and not have to worry about trying to rebalance the whole thing because the motors on this gimbal are strong. Now for the most important thing you all are probably wondering is, is the footage I get with this gimbal smooth? And personally, I think all gimbals nowadays have smooth footage. As long as the gimbal isn't giving you any micro jitters, anything else can pretty much be adjusted by settings or using the proper techniques. So any gimbal I think today is pretty much smooth and I don't really buy gimbals based on how smooth the footage is because they all do a great job. The main thing I focus on is ease of use and features that allow me to do what I need to do. We're at a point technology wise where all the gimbals are pretty smooth. But like I said before, I'm gonna show you the footage and you can make your own decisions based on your own needs.
that footage was in real time, no slow motion, because I wanted you to see the actual raw footage. And I didn't try to overly do any of like ninja walking or anything like that to make the footage smoother. I pretty much just tried to hold the gimbal steady and just walk at a nice smooth pace for most of the shots. And I show you in the bottom corner of the screen how I got the shots. So you can make your own decisions based on how the footage looked to you. And there are many other things I can cover with this gimbal and gimbals in general, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for those videos. Moza also has a electronic monopod slash slider thing called the Slidepod coming out soon, so I will be doing a review on that. It allows you to get pretty cool shots in combination with this gimbal, so as soon as that's released and I get my hands on it, I will be making videos about that as well. So leave any questions or comments you have down below. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, Follow me on Instagram and I will see you guys next time.